France 24 senior reporter James Andre is in Kiev now. He joins me from there. James, Independence Day, of course, usually a time of celebration in Ukraine. What's the feeling like there today? Yes, well, indeed, as you say, usually Independence Day is an opportunity to have a large military parade on this large avenue I'm standing on here, which is right next to Maidan Square. And indeed, last year for 2021 marked the 30th anniversary of Ukrainian independence. And there were 5,000 soldiers marching here, including some American and UK units. There were uh, heavy uh, tanks and also uh, there was an Air Force show. Well, none of this is taking place this year. As you can see, what we have is an exhibition of destroyed Russian tanks. The objective, of course, uh, for the armed forces is to show that the fight is ongoing, to show the people of Kiev where atmosphere is now much more relaxed than it was at the beginning of the war. Uh, it, that the battle is still raging and that Ukraine is indeed uh, giving Russia uh, some really hard times and destroying many, many of their armoured vehicles. Now, it's a very surprising atmosphere here. It's airy in a way. There are a lot of people, a lot of people enjoying uh, this show of burnt-out tanks. You can see children, young couples. Uh, one young couple, for example, we interviewed with the team telling us that, well, you know, they were still, you know, they still couldn't believe that there was an actual physical war in their country. Uh, they were young people who had been in Kiev and Bucha for the whole uh, time of the war and that they still couldn't get over it. Also here, a couple of uh, military two. Uh, brothers uh, who were telling us that they were fighting on the front line in Severodonetsk, that they were just given a few days off and they decided to come to Kiev. And they were saying that the difference in atmosphere between the front lines where they were risking their lives every day and the atmosphere here uh, was very uh, surprising and in a sense, uh, you know, quite shocking. But they were saying that indeed it was Im very important uh, to carry on fighting. And they were saying on this Independence Day that their feeling is that this current war is in fact the final battle for actual independence for Ukraine and that it must be won. James, I know you've been talking to a lot of people there in Kyiv that's been relatively protected during this war. You've also been to the town of Irpin, which has been less protected. Uh, what have people there been saying to you? Well, Arpin, as you know, is a very symbolic city. It was really the front line in this battle uh, through the months of March. You know, the world remembers uh, these thousands of people fleeing this city uh, through a destroyed bridge. Well, the first thing which is really remarkable is that the city is currently being rebuilt. Uh, the bridge itself is being rebuilt next to the original one. Uh, the original one will remain a memorial. And there will be a museum there to commemorate this war for years to come. We're being told by the mayor, actually, uh, that this this museum would open this year, but also in town, thousands of people repairing their houses on the roofs, uh, putting tiles back, you know, re replacing windows, basically making these houses uh, possible to live in and also restoring the community services such as the electricity. So very much a feeling that Irpin is being rebuilt, that it's being revitalized and people telling us, because we asked them, we said, but you're redoing your houses. You know, what proves that there won't be another uh, attack on Irpin? And they say, well, look, you know, we have to move on. We have to rebuild. We have to come back. The main objective is to have the families return. And this is something that is happening. Uh, a lot of women and children are returning uh, to the cities, such as Irpin, because indeed schools are going to reopen in September. And a lot of people in Irpin were telling us that they believe a lot of people will return to put their children in school. But when you speak to these people, we met one woman who decided to move back with her daughter, to put her in school and just to, to get back into her family, her mother, her grandmother, live in the city of Irpin. And she was saying, look, you feel relatively safe. She said, obviously, you can always have a missile strike or an aerial bombing, uh, but still, I believe it is safe enough to live here in Irpin and to send my children to school. She also says that she realizes that life as it was will never come back again. And she says her objective now in the six months to come is indeed to try and build a new life in this wartime context. James, thanks so much for that. It's nice to hear that there's still ideas of hope there in the midst of such a tragic time for everyone. Thank you so much, James Andre there, reporting for us from Kiev.